Alright guys, I uh, promised I'd uh, do a video on this knife I made, and here it is. This is a knife I made out of a farrier's rasp, which is um, what a the person who uses horseshoes, he puts the horseshoes on the horse and uh, files their hooves with this rasp, rasp side and the file side here. So what I basically did was I ground it flat and um, ground it into a knife and heat treated it and put a handle on. And uh, this knife is basically, from what I understand, from what I've read, this is a Save an Edge knife. Save an Edge, that's the company. And um, it is made basically with steel that is very, very similar to 1095. So that's about what I have, and that's how I treated it when I heat treated it. Um, what you're going to see following uh, this clip is a bunch of videos on the whole process and how I did everything and just. Uh, kind of a rundown of all that and doing the grinding and the heat treating and the handle shaping and the whole nine yards. Here you can see the steel that I started with. Just a um, farriage rasp, like I said. Uh, pretty normal looking. That's the rasp side you're looking at. And um, from there I, uh, I added in, or I sharpied what I wanted it to look like, as you see here. And then I ground out the shape roughly. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of that. I originally recorded it, but I lost it. Alright guys, this is a video of me grinding the bevel on uh, the knife here. Sorry for the shaky video. I know it's, um, it's pretty shaky. I had it on a table next to the belt sander. And I didn't think it would be a problem. But it turned out to be one. It vibrated the whole, the whole thing. The whole shed vibrates. The floor vibrates, and then it vibrates the table next to it. So... Um, sorry about that, but here you can see I'm just kind of grinding the bevel. I started out with a jig. Um, big shout out to Captain Jeff, uh, video, or link in the description of the video. Um, he kind of suggested that jig in one of his videos, and I, uh, I started with it. And honestly, I built it too small for the knife. I don't really have a, a platform big enough on the belt sander to support that, that uh, jig. But it's perfect for smaller knives. It just wasn't good for this one. So here I'm grinding the bevel. I'm trying to be uh, as consistent as I can doing it freehand. I'm not perfect, but um, you know I, I do the best I can. So, and what I did, I put black sharpie on the blade itself. You can see. So um, that way I could see where I was grinding where I wasn't. So I could better better differentiate. Go. Again, folks, don't do this at home. Don't use this as a, uh, I guess you could say a uh, tutorial. Don't, yeah, don't it's a tutorial. This. Don't do this at home. This right is now. not safe at all. Not safe at all. We just actually, I think I'm looking at it here, and it's uh, it melted the plastic bottle very se severely. So, good. yes, that's still burning, but didn't really temper that as much as I wanted to. But just um, don't do that at home, people, please. If anything, just please don't do it. Yeah, the last like what quarter inch? Yeah. You know what? First time it's probably huge. You know what? Yeah, that's why you gotta just you know learn. That's a learning yeah, process. Learn, learn a lesson. <laughs> just for my own personal safety. And I don't see any warping, so I'm pretty pleased with this I was I was really concerned it would warp big time because I've, I've seen some things that work pretty bad. Do you know what weight it is? Mixed weight? Again, um, don't use this as a tutorial. He's not liable. We're not liable for any injuries that may occur after you watch this video. Don't get these 
bright ideas? This is a pretty stupid bright idea, but you know, this one turned out better than I thought it would because yeah. I thought we'd catch the ground on fire with some oil or... We do have that last, that last quarter inch that didn't get tempered, but if you look at it, that's actually not a part of the edge. Um, if y'all can see that, it's actually pretty good. So, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, the battery on one of these cameras might die in a second, so if it does, you know, be warned. But, you know, overall, I don't see any significant, I mean, it look, looks straight as an arrow from here. Uh, obviously, I can't really handle it, so there's, yep, that's still hot. <laughs> still hot. So, <laughs> you touch it. So, we're going to put it back in. Just so good. Alright. Alright, here you can see the handle. It's made of bocad. It's a South American hardwood. I'm gluing it up here with JB Quick Weld. It's the only stuff I could find. They were at a regular JB Weld. And I have quarter inch steel pins in there. Before I did this, I had to sand uh, and meet the top of the handles by drilling them out, for, out first and making them meet. And then I just kind of roughed it in, and you'll see in the next shot here where I began grinding the handles. So here's the knife uh, handle being ground. I'm grinding the pins flush first. I didn't want to get it too hot, because if you get it too hot, you possibly compromise the glue. Or the epoxy, I should say. So it's kind of a, a fine line between getting it hot, too hot and uh, still being able to work efficiently, you know. And also, I didn't want to sand off a bunch of the handle. If I went over it, then ended up sanding off a bunch of the handle. I started trying to do that that deal that you just saw, but I prefer doing it up and down. That way, you can uh, make sure you're sanding with the grain. You always want to sand with the grain, no matter what you're working on. Now, watch here in a second. You'll see a uh, pretty stupid mistake. Yep, there it is. Burnt myself touching that handle pin. <laughs> Just be careful about that. It hurt pretty good. Just uh, be careful not to burn yourself. Now we're starting to hit that stage where stuff really starts to flatten out. You see it, uh, it just about flush. Here. Now I'm uh, sanding the handle scales flush to the uh, to the side of the steel knife. And that you do go, you do set the knife flat on the table for. Otherwise, you won't stay square. So it just has to, to sand completely flat with the steel itself. That's how a uh, full tank knife is. So here's a picture of me grinding the handle scale um, with the Dremel tool, or rather cutting kind of the finger groove and, and coming in at an angle with that. It's easy to do if you put in a vise. I tried a file too, like one of the round files, but I think I prefer the Dremel tool. If I set it on a nice low speed, it worked better for me. And um, just overall, it's, it's easy to control. So here's where I started sanding the handle. 
I started out with 180 grit sandpaper and uh, slowly worked my way up just rounding all the edges real nice and obviously I've sped this video up I don't really sand that fast um, just wanted to get a nice uh, kind of semi polished look from the handle Bocats are kind of naturally oil, oily wood so it's not a super hard thing to uh, to get a nice finish from it without applying any stain or anything but I did do that later um, I tried adding some some water to it in sanding and you know I'd heard of that to, to raise the grain but I just didn't like it so here I think I up to, uh, to 220 220 grit I'm sanding with that and uh, just again rounding all the corners and you know slowly getting that that better finish sorry it's kind of out of frame I know you don't uh, think about the camera when you're working on these things that's why I don't have video of everything every single process I went through you know like uh, roughing out the blade and stuff I just forget to turn the camera on or I record it and then I lose the file or you know I start working on it and the camera cuts itself off and doesn't save the file because I just you know I forget about the camera I become engrossed in the project this is the thousand grid right here um, standing with that and a thousand grit sandpaper is hard to come by so I, I uh, use it sparingly but I've got some here and I used it on this project helped a lot in getting a, a smoother finish this is me buffing the handle with my Dremel tool again it's really a great tool for these uh, these handles I think I was just using a little polishing compound and went over it real nice came out real nice and I ended up I did put a coat of just natural minwax stain on it just kind of to protect it to impregnate it with a little more oil make it a little more water resistant so that I don't have problems with that in conclusion there's a lot of people I'd like to thank for helping me out with this project thanks to Tom Goodpasture of Goodpasture Knives he's a custom knife maker in my area and I, when I spoke to him he was the one that really got me rolling on this whole um, project really got my gears turning to try and do this and he makes file knives and sells them. He has a website, check it out. It's in the description below. I'd highly recommend going to him if you're looking for a knife like this to purchase. Thank you to my Aunt Teresa who actually scored this rasp or file from her farrier. Uh, thanks to him as well. A farrier is a person who puts on horseshoes if you didn't know. Thanks to my buddy Ashton Beck. He was behind the scenes and a lot of these videos just uh, helping out and being the cameraman or holding a flashlight or just being good company uh, thanks to my brother Nick who kinda did the same thing cameraman on a lot of these shoots and uh, and helping me out and being company also thank you to Pat uh, Pat's a friend of ours from church who donated uh, a lot of these tools that were used in the um, in the making of this project completely you know cost free to us and that's that was really kind of her she had them they they weren't getting used so she said why don't y'all take them and put them to good use and I have thank you Pat and also thank you to some youtubers who really um, did a lot of knife videos that kind of inspired me Captain Jeff is one that comes to mind I can never remember his full channel name but it's in the description below um, he does a lot of knife videos, so I'd highly recommend subscribing to him, and he sells them too. So go check out his website, uh, and that'll be in the description below. Also, Kylie Harris of Knives and Stuff was really the first knife maker I ran into on YouTube who I really started to watch, and um, was really the first kind of glimpse I saw into knife making. Kylie also sells knives, so make sure to check out his website it's in the description below so thank you to him for being an uh, inspiration to me thanks for watching and if you have any positive criticism to add let me know I'm not an expert you know this is not a guide by any means this is just kind of my experiences and and hope you have your own and do it safely and enjoy uh, enjoy the wonderful hobby that is knife making thanks again for watching have a good day